some um, algebra and geometry uh, information today. Uh, we're going to look at some commonly used terms, and after that, we will move on to some of the basic problems that we will encounter in the algebra chapter. Uh, algebra is obviously hugely important to your success with senior cycle maths. Uh, it underpins a lot of the other topics and chapters, um, and you'll find it's pretty much evident in. 90% of the questions seen on the leading certificate exam. Um, so first things first, what we need to think about is variables. So what is a variable? Uh, a lot of this should hopefully be recognizable from your junior cycle, but let's just refresh our memory uh, on these. So a variable is typically represented by a letter. Um, it's usually X or Y, but it can be any letter. Um, this number may change or it may be unknown. So for this, we'll just say it's X or Y and unknown. And because it's unknown, that doesn't mean that it is something that we can't find a value of. We, we typically can find a value of it. Um, but what's important to remember with variables is that we can only have like with the like. So if I have um, something, say, 2X plus 1Y plus 1X, well, I can only combine my x values there and it becomes 3x plus 1y. Okay, so like with the like. Next, what we need to consider is our coefficient. So a coefficient is the number or symbol um, that is multiplying a variable. Okay, so for instance, in this, our coefficient of 2x is 2. Our coefficient of 1y is 1. And then finally, our coefficient of 1x is 1. So it's the number that typically precedes the variable. Okay. And then finally, we have our constant. What is a constant? A constant is a quantity that does not change in value. Okay, so if something doesn't change, it's always the same. It's constantly the same thing. So it's the numbers that we should be extremely familiar with. Um, examples is just one is a constant. Um, six is a constant. Minus 18 is a constant. Um, minus 143 is a constant. So all of these are num all these numbers are constant because we know what they are. We know their value. It's not going to change depending on the question. Um, it's not going to change based on other variables or coefficients. One is always one, six is always six, and so on. So here we have um, an algebraic binomial expansion question. So they're asking us to multiply 5x plus 1 by 7x plus 1. And um, I will solve this question using the two most common solutions. So the first one uh, I'm going to use is called the array method and it uses this uh, this box over here. So what we need to do is take our first bracket which is 5x plus 1 and we're going to write that along the top. Okay and then we take our second bracket which is 7x plus 1 and we are going to write that vertically. Now, in order to um, solve this, we need to make sure that we multiply each element of the vertical column by each element of the horizontal column. So let's start. We have 7x times 5x. Well, that will give me 35x squared. Okay. We have 7x times 1 is just 7x. We have 1 times 5x, which is just 5x and then we have 1 times 1. Okay, so 1 by 1 is 1. So now what we do is we take out all of the elements that are in the center. So everything inside our red area. Okay, and we take all of those out and we're left with 35x squared plus 7x plus 5x plus 1. We can simplify this a bit further. Our 35x squared remains. 7x plus 5x is 12x and 1 remains as 1. So that is a solution um, to that question there. And now we will look at the alternative method of solving this. 
So our alternative method we will do on the left hand side of this page. And um, what we need to do again is make sure that we multiply each element in the first bracket by each element in the second bracket. So we're going to have our 5x times 7. We're going to have our 5x times 1. We're going to have 1 times 7x. And then 1 times 1. So let's go about doing that now. So 5x times 7x, that's 35x squared. We have 5x times 1, which is plus 5x. And now we go for the second element of the first bracket. So we have 1 times 7x, which is just 7x. And then we have 1 times 1, which is 1. Again, we can tidy this up a bit further. So our 35x squared remains as is. 5x plus 7x is 12x. And our 1 is just 1. So we can see our solutions on both sides here are the same. Um, both are perfectly valid methods of completing this problem. Um, and it's just personal preference to decide which one you use. There's uh, Some people will find one either easier than the other. So now we're going to look at factorizing and what exactly that is and how we uh, do it. So in the last question, uh, we kind of looked at expanding. Okay, expanding two brackets, um, multiplying out variables and constants, and um, seeing how to achieve that. So now when it comes to factorizing, essentially what we're doing is the uh, opposite of um, expanding. We're reducing things down um, and we're trying to uh, express them as factors. So when we think about factorizing, essentially we're trying to push it back into brackets. And brackets of products. So with that first one there we need to consider what is common and what is different about the um, two elements. So we have 3x squared plus 12x. So let's think about coefficients and as we said earlier coefficients are the numbers that precede the variable so we have a 3 and a 12. So what is the highest common factor of those two? What's the biggest number that goes into 3 and 12? Well I think we'll find that it's actually 3. Now, do these guys have anything else in common? Well, they both have an x, right? One of them obviously has an x squared, but uh, our 12 there, its variable is an x. So they both share an x as the highest common factor of the variables. And now we can work on filling in our brackets. So we've taken out a 3x from our 3x squared, so that should mean that we just have our x remaining, and that does make sense, because 3x times x, that would loop us right back around to our 3x squared. Okay, and now we've taken 3x, we've divided 3x into 12x, and 3x goes into 12x four times. So that's our uh, very first um, question done there in terms of factorizing. Now with the second one, I'd encourage you to pause the video and give it a go. All right, and now let's consider our coefficients first and foremost. What's the highest common factor of 10 and 20? Well, this one is pretty straightforward. The highest common factor is 10. All right, and then we have a y cubed and a y squared. So in terms of our variables, um, what is the highest common factor of y squared and y cubed? Well, that will be y squared. And now we can look towards our brackets. So if we've uh, withdrawn 10y squared from 10y cubed, what would that leave us in our brackets? Or how many times does 10y squared go into 10y cubed? Well, it goes in y times. Okay, And that makes sense for us because 10y squared times y, that would bring us back to our 10y cubed. And now I've taken 10y squared from 20y squared. And how many times does 10y squared go into 20y squared? Well, it goes in two times. So that's that question factorized. We can see that um, what we factorized out was our 10y squared, and we were left with y plus 2 remaining inside our brackets. So these are kind of um, relatively straightforward factorizing questions. Now, the one down below is a little bit more difficult. There's a, a bit more thought needed to complete this one. So let's look at coefficients first of all. We have 9, 24, and minus 9. So what is the largest number that could possibly go into all of these? Well, 9 obviously goes into the first and the last, but it won't go into 
in 24. So what we'll come to find here is actually that 3 is the largest number that will go into um, 9, 24 and minus 9. Obviously it goes into 9 3 times, it goes into minus 9 minus 3 times and it will go into 24 8 times. Now let's consider coefficients. Or, sorry, we have considered coefficients. Let's consider variables. So what variables do all of these have in common? Obviously the the very first element has the variables p and x. The second element has p and x as well. But the last one only has a p. So I think our common variable here is going to be the p. All right. So if we were to take 3p out, let's sort of um, consider our brackets at this point. If I've taken 3p out of 9px squared, so let's think about our coefficient. So 3 times 3, that would give me the 9. And what do I need to multiply p by to give me px squared? Well, I'd have to, I would have to multiply it by x squared. Okay, let's do the exact same thing now for our middle value of uh, 24px. So I've withdrawn a 3p, so 3 goes into 24 8 times, and that will be 8x, because 3p times 8x, well that would give me my 24px. And then finally, 3p will go into minus 9p, minus 3 times. And that is that example factorized. So we've taken out what's common and our expression inside of the brackets should appear to be um, significantly simpler than what we were initially presented with. These again are quite basic uh, examples of factorizing. They do get a lot more complex and we'll also um, come to discover some formulae that can help us with our factorizing. Uh, particularly when it comes to factorizing quadratic uh, expressions and equations. Here we're presented um, with some algebraic uh, expressions. So uh, the top one should hopefully be easier than the bottom one. But again, these are relatively basic and these should be things that we have experience of from our junior cycle maths. So the question with the top one is we're trying to multiply the two elements. So obviously we're trying to multiply 2x by everything inside our brackets. So we should have 2x times x and 2x times 3. So 2x times x, well, um, that would give me 2x squared. Okay, and then 2x times 3, well, that would leave me with 6x. And that is that bracket expanded fully. Now with our bottom bracket, we have minus 4 times everything inside our brackets. All right, so minus 4 times 8x, well, a minus and a plus would give me a minus when they're multiplied. Uh, 4 times 8 gives me 32, and then we have our x there because it was 4 times 8x. Minus 4 times 2, plus and a minus give me a minus, so that is minus 8. And then finally we have minus 4 times y, while well, a minus times a minus is a plus, 4 times y is 4y. So these are two pretty uh, basic examples of how this operates, um, and that's how we've expanded out these two brackets using our operation of multiplication. Mm -hmm.